by the chair, uh, Honorable Gaba, to to step in for him. He will join this meeting uh, uh, later. Uh, and we can't get hold of uh, uh, the coach. Eh? His phone is off. We don't know whether he's struggling with network or what is the matter. However, we will continue with the meeting. The agenda has been uh, placed in front of all of us. We'll be dealing uh, basically with uh, two items, uh, which is the presentation by the chairperson of the Defense Force Service Commission, uh, the annual report, and then we'll be dealing with the amendment of the fourth term uh, program. Uh, of the committee. So, honorable members, uh, I declare this meeting officially open and welcome all of you. May I get an indication for the adoption of the agenda? Yeah, honorable. Sure. Dennis Ryder here. Um, I move for adoption of the agenda. Any seconder? Uh, I, second I second chair. Uh, Honorable Bukas. Uh, do we have any apologies, Pat? Yes, Chair, we have from the minister, the deputy minister, and Mr. Shelembe, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Mare will join later. Those are the only apologies, oh, and General Olomisa, those are the only apologies which I've received. Noted, uh, Honorable Ryder, your hands is up. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, just, just to clarify, we've received comments from both uh, Mr. Shelembe and Mr. Mare. Um, both have got other commitments which have uh, run a little bit late, and I will be joining as soon as I can. Okay. Uh, can we then uh, grant them uh, those apologies? Read. Granted, Chair. Thank you. Uh, Chair? Yes? I'm sorry for logging in late. We're experiencing a network problem. So I'm requesting the host to have patience with us and allow us back into the meeting whenever we request to. Okay. Uh, it, it's fine. I think it's noted we've got uh, two hosts. Uh, you are requesting your cooperation because... Uh, Network sometimes is a bit of a problem. The system normally kicks people in, it allows them in, it kicks them out from time to time. So your cooperation in terms of admitting uh, honorable members into the committee will uh, really, yeah. Mr. Mutle? Yes, uh, honorable Mafanya? Yes. Uh, I agree with everything here, but though I would like to raise my concern, when we have both two principals, uh, being the minister and the deputy not, absent, not present, either if one of them was here, I accept the apologies, but um, that's my little concern that I raise here. Thank you. Okay. Your concern is, is noted. We will uh, then raise it with them. Uh, we are, I think we are done with apologies. Can we then move to item five? Uh, uh, maybe if the chairperson of uh, the Defense Force Com Commission can uh, introduce the team and then venture into the report. <clears throat> thank, thank, thank you very much, uh, Chairperson. And uh, good evening, uh, uh, members of the committee. Uh, am I audible? Yes, you are. Yes, you are. 
Loud and clear. Thank, thank you very much. Uh, I hope we have all uh, our um, commissioners present. Can I please ask them to introduce themselves? I know one person, Commissioner Zulu, uh, said he was he's having connectivity problems. I don't know if he's in, but can I go around, uh, starting with you, uh, Deputy Chair, and introduce yourself, uh, and then the rest of the members, as well as the members of the Secretariat. Please, uh, Deputy Chair. Thank you, Chairperson. My name is Sibina Shapolosa. I serve as the Deputy Chairperson of the Commission. Uh, Commissioner Esop, can you introduce yourself, please? Yes, uh, my name is Dr. Ziad Esop. I'm one of the part-time commissioners serving on the Defence Force Service Commission. Thank you. The two advocates, whoever wants to uh, start, Advocate Kumara. Uh, Is Advocate Kumara in? Can I chip in? It's Advocate Mbana. Yes, thank you, uh, Advocate Mbana. Is Advocate Kamala in? Good evening, um, Advocate uh, Linda Mbana. I'm one of the commissioners. Thank you. Th thanks very much. Is Commissioner Zulu in? Uh, I am Commissioner Kumalo. There we are. Thank, I thank am you a part-time commissioner. Thank you. Dr. Zulu is battling to connect. I'm still ar arranging him to connect. Thanks. Lovely. And uh, Commissioner Mabilani? Thank you, Chairperson. Uh, good evening, uh, members of the committee. My name is Salom Mabilani. I'm the part-time commissioner of the Defence for Service Commission. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Motsepe? Uh, good evening, Honorables. My name is Fudumala uh, Mutsepe. I'm the head of Secretary APC. Uh, Ms. Lutz? Good morning. <clears throat> good evening, uh, members. Um, I'm Marlene Lutz from the Defence Force Service Commission. I'm the Deputy Director responsible for the research section. Is uh, the researchers in? Uh, can they uh, introduce themselves, please? Ms. Polofani. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Um, hello. Yes, we can hear you. Okay. Good evening, commissioners and members of the uh, portfolio committee. I am Lerato Polofani, a researcher at Defense for Service Commission. Thank you. Mr. Uh, Magabani, are you in? I do not see him on the list of participants, Chairperson. I think I've just seen Commissioner Joe Jongile. Commissioner Jongile, are you in? Doesn't look like it. Uh, we're chairperson, we have a, a, a serious. He, uh, looks like he is some in, of, Chair. Jongile. In. Okay, but he's unmuted. Okay. Uh, it looks like we are battling to get some of the commissioners in. It looks like we are, the chair, we have seven out of our eight commissioners uh, on board at the moment. Um, so um, uh, that's from our side. It's a, virtually a full complement. We are eight commissioners. Uh, at the moment, we have seven and then uh, members of the uh, secretariat. Uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Chairperson. Sorry, Chair, we all in. It's just that I think they're battling with their connections. All of us are in. Okay, we're well, we all in, all eight of us. Even Commissioner Zulu yes. is in. Even okay, Commissioner lovely. Zulu, but he's just been cut off. So he right. is around. He's, he's, it, he's it, trying to reconnect. Thank you. It's not... Noted, uh, uh, you can proceed with the, the, the presentation. Thank you very much. Uh, okay. Could I have the next slide, please? Thank you. It's to really uh, the, uh, the members of the, the committee, you've uh, uh, been uh, given our report. Um, so I'm going to take you through uh, the 
PowerPoint presentation fairly quickly. Next slide, please. That is what we want to uh, scope, uh, performance, information, governance, HR, and financial management, financial information. Next slide, please. There we are, the, the performance information. It's comprised of uh, subsections, of financial performance and non-financial performance. Next slide, please. There is the vote. Uh, and I, as the budget holder, uh, responsible for that. Next slide, please. Thank uh, you. To execute the mandate uh, in section 22. Yeah. Defense Amendment Act. The commission manages and controls expenditure. Oh, in the hold, vote. On. hold on. Hello? Can, can just hold on a second. Okay. Uh, and, uh, Members mute their mics because they are interrupting your presentation. That's uh, okay. You are on Galaxy S8. Uh, That's correct. Okay, you may proceed. Thank you very much. Um, there's the, the budget um, to execute the mandate. Uh, total expenditure was uh, 80, uh, 81%. Uh, may I just say that our total budget uh, for 1920 was 16.6 .6 million. Uh, we'll come to that a bit later. The HR budget was 10.1 million, and the operational budget is 6.5 million. Um, subsequently, we surrendered uh, 3 million. Uh, cal which calculated to 17.95% of the total budget, uh, of the operational budget. Next slide, please. The reasons for surrendering, there we can see it's comprised to, to compile two years in advance, and the, we budgeted for uh, the recommended full-time chairperson uh, to the amount of uh, 1,200,000. Uh, one of the part-time commissioners was appointed as an acting chairperson <coughs> uh, from uh, 1 January 2019 for eight months, and then from 1 April to uh, 31 December 2019 was remunerated as such. And also a level eight post, the researcher was budgeted for that, was not staffed fully. Next slide, please. There, the reasons also we continue. Reasons for uh, surrendering uh, 2.2 million is the um, uh, saving of uh, that amount. Uh, we didn't have all our uh, commissioners on board at the particular time. There was a saving uh, uh, there. Next slide, please. There, we continue with that for surrendering performance uh, initiatives in uh, incentives for deserving employees reduced from six to uh, um, only three people on category D. Um, there you can read that. I'm not going to go to the details. The appointment to level four was a budgeted amount of some, that amount. Uh, next slide, please. Again, for we surrendered uh, 176,000 within the operational budget. It was a follow up visit uh, to uh, Opera Ops Corona bases. It was cancelled due to uh, bad weather conditions uh, and could not be rescheduled within the period under review. And then the uh, scheduled uh, work session for October 2019 and subsequent uh, 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 work session in December 2019 was postponed. We wanted to await the appointment of the new uh, uh, three additional uh, commissioners. Next slide, please. The reasons for surrendering uh, um, our operational uh, uh, budget, uh, further money, four scheduled follow visits to military training units could not take, uh, could not be executed which impacted negatively on the envisaged uh, operational expenditure. Next slide, please. Uh, 
um, and also the participation in the uh, RT15 uh, government contract for the, for the procurement um, uh, of a, a video of the conferencing facility uh, was not uh, authorized by the Secretary for Defense. Next slide. Uh, again, uh, performance information. There's financial part B, financial information. The reasons uh, we continue with uh, surrendering money. The protracted administrative uh, and tender process and procedures delayed. Uh, the outsourcing of uh, actuarial consultancy, uh, which wanted to look at uh, and uh, unpack uh, a suggestion that we have uh, are going to put forward in terms of the group life insurance scheme. Um, that hasn't uh, materialized as yet. And the last one is a planned visit we had to uh, the Indian Defense Forces uh, could also not be realized. Next slide. Uh, the also, the delayed approval of procurement issues, all of these in relation to operational uh, budgets. Um, the transportation uh, of um, the commissioners, uh, we could not uh, purchase another vehicle uh, to the tune of uh, 510,000 rand. And then the delayed uh, issuing and receiving of invoices from service providers, such as logistics, uh, AB Logistics, we go through uh, uh, AB Logistics uh, uh, within the uh, uh, DOD headquarters the arms corps building for transport and accommodation as well as 14,000 for uh, uh, renting of uh, photocopy machines next slide please uh, we had not ordered performed on uh, performance information for a uh, period under review next slide please Part B, again, the performance information. The uh, commission reports against one strategic performance indicator as guided by the Defense Amendment Act. Uh, it's quoted the commission must within two months at the end of each financial year submit a report on its activities and findings to the minister. And there we submitted uh, uh, to the minister and was tabled in parliament on uh, 27 July. For the, financial, for the annual activity report of 1819. Next information, please. Next slide. Reasons for um, a deviation. The delaying out uh, was uh, due to uh, national elections, the subsequent uh, appointment of the Minister for Defense and Military Veterans, and the delayed finalization of the forwards by uh, the Minister Sekdev and the Chief of the SANDF. Next slide, please. There's, now we get to uh, non-financial non performance information. Overview of strategic engagements uh, for the period under review. We took part in 120 activities and engagements during the financial year, including, but not limited to two meetings with parliamentary committees one with the minister and 61 engagements with internal and external stakeholders. Next slide. There we are. Um, on uh, level two, core performance indicator on an annual basis, make recommendations to the minister on improvement of salaries and service benefits. The commission did not table a recommendation on conditions of the living adjustments as the three agreement of salaries and service benefits will reach its uh, final, this third year during this present financial year. Next slide, please. The performance status, we continue. There's page 38 of our annual uh, activity report. In order to table the service benefit for SANDF members, we, uh, there were 30 visits to military bases and units throughout the country were conducted to research and table validated recommendations um, regarding uh, duty buses and military transport during the period under review. In this regard, a number of visits 
engagements and negotiations were held with strategic stakeholders, such as the Department of Transport in several provinces. Next slide, please. Um, on our level two core performance indicator, which you also report to the minister, make recommendations to the minister on policies in respect of conditions of service. We submitted uh, two reports with findings to the minister, one subsequent to the consultative visit to the Air Force Base Langerbahn, and one subsequent to follow-up visit to two military hospitals in the Weinberg in Cape Town. Next slide, please. The commission presented uh, an information brief to the Secretary Council on the Group Life Insurance Scheme. The process, as I've indicated earlier, to obtain actuarial uh, consultant service could not be concluded during the uh, 1920. The tender process commenced during uh, this uh, financial year for external service provider to conduct a comparative study on benefits from other schemes similar to group life insurance scheme. Next slide, please. Could you, could you mute uh, to, uh, the administrator? Thank you very much. Uh, continue. Of the 31 recommendations submitted subsequent to the visit to the Air Force uh, Base Langerbahn, Six recommendations addressed the revision and amendment of policies in respect of conditions of service. Next slide, please. The minister responded in January this year to the fact that some of the recommendations tabled to our visits at Langerbahn fall outside the mandate of the commission. The chief of the SANDF and chief of Air Force were instructed to consider those recommendations which could be accommodated in the current financial, for current fiscal constraints and report back to the minister. Uh, the commission thus far has not received any uh, feedback reports. Next slide, please. Uh, out of the 14 recommendations uh, tabled in respect of follow-up visits to two military hospital, three recommendations refer to the revision or the amendment of policies and conditions of service. Again, the minister responded in January 2020 that the chief of the SANDF was instructed to uh, request the uh, Surgeon General to consider the recommendations which could be accommodated within the current fiscal uh, constraints and report back to the, uh, through the chief of the SANDF to the minister. Next slide, please. Um, continuation, the members of the uh, uh, Commission's Policy Review Committee commenced with investigations as to the reasons why uh, approved military patients are outsourced to intensive care units of private hospitals at great expense and the depletion of an already inadequate uh, item uh, 15 budget of uh, the military health service. On completion of the investigation, a comprehensive report with findings and recommendations will be tabled to the executive authority, which is in this current financial year. That's almost complete. The uh, commission did not receive any feedback on alternative solutions to the findings alluded to in the report or indications where recommendations affecting policies of the SANDF could be accommodated or to provide reasons where such is not possible. Next slide, please. We continue. The commission is not aware of the development of implementation plans on any of the tabled recommendations or the pursuing of alternative solutions to the findings of the commission, which did not require additional funding. Measures were put in place uh, by the, uh, the Commission's Monitoring and Evaluation Committee to follow up on recommendations tabled to the Office of the Minister. Next slide, please. Uh, a Commission Monitoring and Evaluation uh, com uh, Committee was established in accordance with Section 62B 
of the mandate to monitor the effectiveness of implementation of respective conditions of service uh, policies as well to monitor the progress and the implementation and recommendations tabled by the commission. Next slide, please. Uh, now we go to governance. Uh, three, it's four parts. Risks and mitigating actions, fraud and corruption prevention, health and safety issues, portfolio committees. Next slide, please. There, the operational risks on page 46 of our annual report. Risks are recorded in the uh, commission's uh, risk register. There are at least two risks have a negative impact on the revised secretariat uh, HR structure of only 19 posts, of which 16 are funded and 12 are staffed. And then the effective, efficient, and economical support uh, rendered by the secretariat to the commission uh, on expenditure items uh, 15 to 60. Next uh, slide. Members of the commission and uh, the code of uh, ethics and code of conduct. Members of the commission and secretarial attended an orientation session in uh, February this year. It was presented by the Institute of Directors of the King Commission of the King Four Principles. The focus of King Four will guide the commission in terms of good governance and to focus on what should be achieved and not on uh, uh, mandating specific functions. I think this is an important area because it really, uh, uh, we, we have to concentrate a lot on this financial year, this present one, in terms of governance issues. They're very important, these. Uh, uh, the committee, an ethical committee was established to develop, promote, and maintain our ethical standards and an ethical culture in the commission to ensure issues uh, to facilitate sound uh, decision making. And employees of the commission conform to a code of conduct uh, that's for the uh, Public Service Act personnel who are employed in the commission, in the secretariat. Next slide, please. There were no incidents, uh, continuation, uh, fraud and corruption and prevention. Uh, there's no incidents of fraud and or corruption were registered or investigated during the reporting period. All procurement processes and procedures are executed according to the Department of Defense procurement policies and instructions that are aligned with national treasury policies and regulations. Can you hold on? Can you hold on a bit, Commissioner? Yes, I'll hold on, uh, Chairperson. I'll hold. Honorable Shalamba, can you your mic? Honorable Shalamba. Can you mute uh, Shalamba's mic? Host, can you assist by muting uh, Honorable Shalemba's mic? Thank you. You may proceed, uh, Commissioner. Yeah, thank you, Chairperson. The health and safety issues. Uh, there is no provision in the structure of the Commission for the appointment of an occupational health and safety officer. The function is uh, executed by uh, means of an acceptance uh, of a double uh, function within the secretariat. Someone doubles up in that. Health-related hazards, risks, and dangers are reported to the appointed uh, OHS officer within uh, the South African Medical Health Services headquarters where our offices are located. Next slide, please. Then on governance, the commission attended a colloquium on civil military relations in South Africa, was hosted by the portfolio committee uh, in Cape Town in August, 2019. Uh, the commission also briefed the portfolio committee uh, also in August, 2019 and the joint standing committee. 
in February 2020 and tabled uh, responses to questions uh, proposed by the Joint Standing Committee in March uh, of this year. Next slide, please. The human resource management, uh, the status of HR, uh, HR priorities for the year under review and the impact, employee performance management and challenges faced by the commission. Next slide, please. Here we have 12 employees on the approved structure of 19 as staff. It's a very small uh, uh, secretariat we have. Three posts are unfunded, the commission secretary, the media and case management clerk, and then three members of reserve force and one detached member augmented the support services within uh, the secretariat. Next slide, please. And then uh, continuation. Uh, we are waiting the appointment of two employees, uh, procurement uh, clerk and driver. And the secretary for uh, the head of the secretariat was appointed on 1 January of this year. Next slide, please. Uh, and then we um, compiled, uh, complied with the performance management and development system implemented by the Department uh, of Defense. Next slide, please. And then challenges uh, faced by the commission with respect to human resource management. The process to revise the structure and appointment levels of members of the secretariat has been delayed by cost containment measures on staffing uh, and the expansion of structures are pronounced by the minister of, as pronounced by the minister of finance way back in February 2016. In order to augment capacity within the secretariat, as I mentioned in a couple of slides ago, the commission called on reserve force members as an interim and ad hoc measure. Uh, the last point there is other administrative gaps within the secretariat were mitigated through the practice of double hatting. Next slide, please. Then uh, part D is financial information. This uh, part comprised of two subsections, a view of financial results, program expenditure, environments, rollovers, unauthorized irregular, asset management, gifts, exemptions, and events after reporting date. Next slide, please. We executed uh, the mandate within the allocated budget confirmed affirmed by uh, 120 strategic activities in order to advance the mission. The total expenditure of our allocated budget was 81.26%. Uh, total expenditure on HR budget was 77.6%. We surrendered 3 million and reasons we indicated earlier in slides 9 to 16. And subsequent to the surrendering of funds, the total expenditure on the operational budget was 92.47%. Uh, uh, Next slide, please. There we are. There is our HR budget, uh, uh, 10 million, 10.1 million. Yeah, I'm not going to go through the details. We can see uh, um, s and is uh, 1.7 million. Uh, I'm not going to go through that. You've seen this report uh, before and you've commented equipment is 4 million. There's a total of 16.6 million. Uh, next slide, please. There were no, uh, we did not occur in environments and rollovers. Next slide. And there were no unauthorized, irregular, fruitless, and wasteful expenditure during the period under review. Uh, we can report on no findings and or discrepancies in its asset management register. And we do not own any public capital infrastructure assets exceeding the amount of 500,000 Rand. We do not receive any gifts that require recording and inclusion in the uh, Commission's uh, gift register during the period under review. 
Next slide, please. Uh, we uh, deviations, exemptions and deviations. We did not receive any exemptions and deviations from National Treasury. And the commission complies with the new cost containment measures as per guide for members of the executive and the ministerial handbook. Next slide. And events after the reporting date, there are no events favorable or unfavorable occurred subsequent to 31 March, 2020 that had financial implications on the commission. Uh, we had a last actual uh, planning sessions over a period in March, 2020, before the national state of disaster was declared and the level lock, the, the, the lockdown was implemented. However, the commission was able to interact frequently through uh, webinars and virtual platforms. Though the commission could not visit military bases and units, the commission was able to focus on strategic issues and intensify the effectiveness of the uh, respective uh, commission's uh, committees. I think that's the last slide. That's it. Thank you, Chairperson. Um, I don't know whether the uh, Deputy Chair wants to add um, anything and uh, at this stage. No, Chair, you, Chair thank you. No, thank you very much. Thank you, Chairperson. That uh, briefly is our uh, uh, annual report on our annual activities. Um, uh, but thank you very much, sir. Okay, now th thank you, Commissioner, for for the presentation. Uh, we'll then uh, ask uh, honourable members to indicate uh, their interaction with uh, the presentation through a show of hands on the platform. Uh, a note, uh, Honourable Ryder. Honourable Ryder, you will be the first one to go. Thank you, Chairperson. Um, yeah, Mr. Robinson and all your commissioners, thank you very much for the presentation, well received. Um, and I'm not sure if it's uh, the sign that the commissioners have done their work over the year or a sign that you've done your work today well. But uh, I think that, you know, it's, it's a good reflection on the, on the work of the commission. I think generally that, uh, uh, yeah, well, certainly at place where you, it, it looks like you guys are achieving what you're supposed to be doing, or sorry, doing what you're supposed to be doing. Um, but the question is, are you achieving what you're supposed to be achieving? And, and, and following up on our last interaction, I, I just like to, because we have subsequently acted, uh, interacted with the, um, the, the the minister and deputy minister uh, and, and addressed the issues around the, the fact that the recommendations of the commission are um, seem to not be finding their way through to to, a, to actually any execution. Have you so f first question? Have you felt any improvement in the uh, kind of relationship that you have with the minister and deputy minister? In terms of actually achieving what you what you said to to do, so you know, following following our last interaction, that that's the first question. Second question really just just points to the fact that um, um, you have on your on your slides you indicated that there was an amount of uh, money spent for flights, and I've managed to lose that slide on my other screen here, but it was nine hundred odd thousand rand that was spent on. 110 flights. Now, just value for money. I, I mean, I don't know where the hell you're flying to, but that's about 8,700 rand per flight. So, if you, if you can just maybe tell me, you know, are those all domestic flights or, or have there been international flights there? Because to me, that, you know, I know when we fly from, for example, me, Joburg to Cape Town, the expense is around the 3,000 rand a flight level. So, it doesn't quite add up. Clarify that for me. Um, the last question really is just for, for my own benefit. If you can indicate to me the, uh, you know, are, are there any gray areas between the operation of yourselves and the ombudsman? Because um, um, we've had presentation from both, and certainly in my view, although on paper there, there's no gray areas, but, but have you experienced anything 
that may lead to kind of overlaps or, or, or gray areas, things falling between the cracks between the two. Chair, thank you for the opportunity. You're welcome, thank you. Uh, Honorable uh, Chair Kaba. Uh, th thank you, uh, 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 Chair, Acting Chair, and the greetings to the commissioners. Uh, and then thanks, and then thank the, the the chairperson of the commission for the uh, today. And um, I think uh, we must welcome uh, the the report, um, which uh, um, reflects a significant improvement. Um, in the performance of the entity, uh, I think we should we should be uh, appreciated for uh, job well done. Um, just two questions, uh, Chair. I'm sorry, I'm not going to uh, set my video on because uh, where I am, uh, the network is terrible. Um, Last time we, we requested the, the entity to consider uh, developing um, uh, an independent uh, website um, <clears throat> so that uh, it does not get uh, clustered together with uh, other uh, activities or other you know uh, links. And I'm not too sure if you have succeeded in, in doing that. And uh, because, um, like I said, it was going to be a source, an easy source of uh, uh, information, uh, not only for, for us in Parliament, but even for people that you are meant uh, to service. That is the, 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 the soldiers on the ground. It should be easy to access um, your, 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 your information. I even said that in, in the past that uh, the Public Service Commission, you know exactly where to get the, 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 the information, uh, including uh, tracking uh, their past uh, recommendations and what happened uh, to them and so on and so forth. So, so in other words, my question is on the DFSC website. How far have you gone with that? And then the second question, uh, Chair, um, relates to... Um, what the DFSC noted as a concern um, around the status and, and common challenges, uh, such as the lack of uh, auctions of obsolete, obsolete, obsolete equipment and the serviceability of um, vehicles. Have any of these uh, recommendations uh, been um, have any recommendations in this regard been made to, to the minister? And um, so I, we, we note that this, is, uh, this, this matter arose uh, in your report uh, previously, 1919 uh, 1920. And uh, if we could shed uh, some light on, on that, we'd actually appreciate it. Uh, Chair, my last point. Uh, was on the um, the agreements, the call, uh, conditions of uh, uh, police conditions of what? The, what does L stand for, by the way? Caller, uh, caller. Uh, cost of living allowance. It's cost, cost of, of living, living allowance. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. That uh, um, I think you you. Um, <clears throat> it, it is an eight three agreement, and uh, you said that uh, uh, 20, 20, 20, sorry, 20, 2020, 2021 is the third year of the of the three year agreement, and that next year uh, you then start the process. I think the negotiations must start now so as to uh, generate a three-year agreement that will run from 2021 uh, 20, uh, onwards over the three-year period. How far are you with uh, the, have those negotiations been started? If, if, if not yet, when are you aiming to start uh, the negotiations? 
and uh, on the new uh, color agreement. I thought I should just leave it at that for now, Chair. Thank you so much. Okay. The next uh, honorable member will be uh, Honorable Bikas. Thank you, Chair. Chair, thank you. Uh, Chair, uh, last time when we met with the, with the commission, and also now we noticed that, that there's challenges with the implementation of the recommendations. Now I see, Chair, that uh, they establish a monitoring and evaluation committee. I just want to know, Chair, when was it established and what is the impact, especially on the, is there a positive change in the communication with the department or what according to them is the problem? Is it just red tape or is there something else with the implementation of the uh, um, resolutions? And then Chair, in their view, was there any challenge for soldiers during this pandemic, for example, in their living conditions that could have, have an influence on their moral? Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I think uh, those are the hands that uh, uh, I've seen so far. Uh, but uh, Chair, also, I have a question as well. Maybe if you can clarify clarify the the, the joint standing committee. Uh, what you meant when you said. Uh, uh, with regard to the recommendations that we have made on uh, South African uh, Air Force recommendation, uh, the minister replying that uh, those recommend or some of those recommendations are falling outside your mandate. What were those recommendations? What was your take when you recommended uh, uh, to an extent that you were reprimanded uh, by the minister to say, no, no, you are now stepping outside the line. Uh, if you can clarify that uh, for me, over to you, uh, uh, Commissioner Robertson. Thank, thank, thank you, uh, uh, Chairperson. Um, I must say that some of these questions are, are, are really useful. It, it, it assists us in terms of trying to understand uh, how the thinking of the, uh, uh, the Joint Standing Committee uh, I'm going to make some general comments and then I will ask the Deputy Chair uh, and Mr. Mutsepe uh, to, to, uh, to add on to some of the uh, questions too. But let me start with uh, um, Honorable uh, Ryder. Um, I think, Honorable Ryder, are we achieving what we're supposed to achieve? I think at this point in time, we could say it's work in progress. We ultimately are not achieving what we, we really want to achieve because some of the recommendations are not finding the light of day. And I think uh, you yourself have indicated uh, via in, in your meetings you've had, in your interactions you've had with the minister, that um, the, the, the sticking point that goes from the minister to the, the SECDEV and the chief of the SANDF. And as such, we haven't had any proper feedback from any quarter with respect to the recommendations. And I think it's something that uh, uh, we could uh, really uh, follow up on now that we have had a, a good meeting with the minister two weeks ago, three weeks ago. Uh, we're going to have another session with our strat plan. We want the minister to, we'd like the minister to come and uh, uh, talk to us. Uh, and unpack some of these uh, issues around the recommendations. But frankly speaking, I don't think we've achieved what we've set out to achieve. We're somewhere there, but we're not there uh, completely. The issue around uh, flights, I'm going to ask uh, Mr. Mutsepi um, to uh, elaborate on, but, 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 my, but my understanding is that all of these flights uh, we've got four commissioners who live outside of Gauteng. 
uh, in the Eastern Cape, Western Cape, uh, KZN, um, and Mpumalanga. Uh, so the flights relate to them coming up to uh, uh, our headquarters in Pretoria. Uh, many of the other flights are in relation to visiting the uh, different bases around the country. Uh, I think also um, uh, visiting uh, the Cape Town and the Portfolio Committee and Joint Standing Committee. But Mr. Motsepe, I think, will uh, elaborate and expand on that issue. Um, uh, and maybe other commissioners want to comment too. Uh, with respect to, I don't see any gray areas between the uh, commission and the military ombudsman. I think the roles are clearly defined. Uh, we don't take uh, uh, individual uh, complaints and deal with that. It, uh, if we receive it, we had to be, we send it directly to uh, the military at the ombuds. So I, I don't uh, see any gray areas. Maybe some of the other commissioners can pick up on some of the nuances, uh, but from where I'm sitting, I think uh, they, the, the roles and responsibilities are clearly defined. Coming to the actual uh, chairperson, um, Mr. Motsepe can speak a bit about the website um, and the status of obsolete equipment. I don't recall uh, in, um, in any of our recommendations, and I'm open to correction, uh, uh, making serious recommendations around the uh, uh, obsolete equipment. <clears throat> the COLA, uh, I think the deputy chairperson is uh, uh, well uh, acquainted with this issue. And I wonder whether our researcher, Mr. Magabani, has uh, tuned in yet, because he's uh, really up to speed uh, with that issue. Um, so I'll give over to the deputy chair. Uh, with respect to um, Honourable Bjorkas, I think the, <clears throat> we've set up the Monitoring and Evaluation Committee. We've developed a framework document, uh, which we've finalised. Um, now we have to uh, then, it, it links up to the recommendations, because if uh, we can't get any progress in terms of the recommendations, it's very difficult to... Uh, to uh, to monitor uh, those issues, but uh, we, we, we're trying by all means to find a way forward on that issue. With respect to the uh, uh, living conditions uh, under COVID, we had developed a questionnaire that we were going to uh, uh, send out, but that was in respect to the personal uh, protection equipment, the PPEs that uh, members of the SANDF were uh, given at, uh, at, uh, at the ground level. But maybe some of the other commissioners uh, would like to comment on that. And again, the recommendation, the last one, recommendations uh, uh, at Langerbahn Air Force Base. I can't, uh, I don't have the recommendations in front of me. I think uh, Ms. Lutz or Mr. Matsepi or both of them could uh, expand a little bit on, on, on that. But it was felt that uh, somehow uh, um, we, we, we were not uh, in order with that one. But uh, from my side, uh, Chair, that's it. Can I ask the Deputy Chair to, uh, to, to, to uh, compliment me, take up a few issues, and then afterwards, uh, Mr. Motsepi and Ms. Lutz, maybe uh, Commissioner Zulu wants to come in on the monitoring and evaluation. But let me leave it for there. Uh, Chairperson, over to you, Deputy Chair. Thank you, Chairperson. Um, uh, if I may, uh, just to add and agree with you that um, there's certainly on paper and in practice, there are no overlaps. However, sometimes the soldiers do not know and understand who's who, but as the chairperson has said, we do not entertain the individual complaint because it is not in our mandate. However, if the same complaint is representative 
um, of a group or by a group, we would then entertain it. But what we do have is a mechanism where as and when individual soldiers send such individual requests to us, we forward them and, and inform them that what they have submitted to us has been forwarded to the ombuds. And then with regards to um, COLA, Cola. What, yes, the, the cost of living allowance. What we have is a situation where our role is to make recommendations. We research and then we make the recommendation. So we remain, this is something we do annually anyway. So we continue researching in that space and we remain ready to make the submission on time. And then the negotiations would be a part played by the DOD itself. And then with regard to, um, um, I think Chairperson, I will let Commissioner, Commissioner Zulu come in on the MNE and if uh -huh. he is not, yeah, Commissioner Zulu yes, to come in on MNE. Are you connected? Thank you. I am connected, Deputy Chair. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Chair. Uh, <clears throat> I think most of the input uh, on the MNE has been covered by the Chair. Uh, safe to say that uh, the key responsibility of the committee is to monitor the implementation of the of, of the policies and the conditions of service. Follow up on the commission's uh, recommendation to the minister and the Department of Defense. But uh, by and large, uh, since the establishment of the committee, uh, we have been seized by setting up the governance framework to regulate the committee's function. But it doesn't mean sure, that the work has not been done. Uh, the work has been done. Uh, we've been following up with the minister on all the recommendations that we have made to ascertain whether the implementation has actually been done. Uh, so the work is actually continuing in that regard, and the most part has actually been covered by the by the chair. But in addition to the question on the staff morale and the COVID-19, it is true that uh, we have actually established a, 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 a questionnaire uh, with a, a view to actually conduct a survey to establish to what extent the DOD has actually complied with the COVID-19 regulation and its policies, especially around issues of health and safety. We would also want to establish the impact of the COVID-19 into the moral uh, of the members. So the work is still continuing. Uh, we are hoping that uh, in, if um, we come back next week, next year, we may actually be able to provide a detailed report in as far as the survey is concerned. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank, thanks very much. Can, can I ask uh, Mr. Mutsepi to come in in terms of uh, giving a bit more detail in terms of the flights? Um, and uh, the issue around uh, uh, the website. Thank you. And Thank you, Chair. Ask Ms. Ms. Lutz, I will ask Ms. Lutz to come in in terms of the uh, recommendations at Langabarn. I think she was uh, part of our visit there. I'm, I'm open to correction. But please, uh, Mr. Motsepi, over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Thank you, uh, uh, Honorable Chair of the Committee and the members. Uh, on the issue of the flights, uh, the, the cost of the flights is only related to domestic. And then as the chair has indicated uh, uh, in her introductory uh, response was that uh, uh, during the year under, under, under question, we had four commissioners who were staying outside the, 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 the hotel. And then whenever we have uh, firstly, we have our, our, our the plenary meetings, uh, which are strategic function. Uh, we have to fly them in, and and that's that's one. The second thing is that uh, we undertook uh, uh, visits, consultative visits, uh, to the units, and even uh, having undertaken some visits to the to the off corona basis. I think the chairperson has, has, has indicated that. Uh, the 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 other issue is that. Sometimes the commissioners or the, commi the commissioners are invited by, by the department uh, to attend some of the strategic functions that they, they, are, they are hosting. 
And uh, as and when they do that, uh, uh, of course, we will be flying them in. For example, uh, during the year under 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 review, uh, there were activities like the um, uh, there were activities like uh, the the what is that? Uh, quite a range the of parades. activities. The parades. Uh, the armed forces day. The, the armed forces day. You are looking at. Uh, some of the uh, visitations uh, to, 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 the, to the hospital that I've mentioned, uh, and other strategic activities which I can mention, but they are all included in the report, as you are all being uh, uh, very much uh, exposed to. And then uh, I did mention that uh, it is all uh, pertaining to domestic flights uh, 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 members. Thank you. And then therefore, on the question of the uh website the website yeah it, it, there's been a long coming requirement for the defense force service commission and there has been some few twists and turns but i can confirm uh, uh, uh this point in time that the CETA and the department of defense uh, division called uh cmis uh, communication management information systems, of which we are the lines in as far as this kind of requirement is, they have committed uh, that they will have the website of the DFSC up and running by the end of November, to be specific, 30 November 2020. And this has been uh, it has been moved to the to the right after they have committed. Uh, that uh, it will be up and running by end of this month. And uh, this commitment has been put in writing, and uh, this commitment has been uh, 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 further uh, uh, concretized by the chief of that division, uh, being Major General uh, Shashape. So that's what I can, I can mention to the, to, to, uh, to the honorable members with regard to the website. And then as I said, it has been a lot, it's a long coming requirement that, uh, 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 we, 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 we could not wait further uh, to have it. And the other question of uh, lack of obsolete and sensibility of vehicles, uh, I can confirm what, what the chair has said. There hasn't been any recommendations specifically uh, tabled with regard to this, uh, but it is a, 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 a matter that is a, is, a, is a concern and was raised even by the, the, the representatives of the DFSC during the what we call a, 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 a logistic endeavor that was held under the year in review. Uh, and I think I can, I, can, I can end up there. Thank you very much. Yeah? Okay. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Motsepe. Ms. Lutz, uh, are you able to uh, just unpack for us the, the, the issues around the recommendations we made to the minister um, after a visit to uh, Langaban Air Force Base? So, yes, uh, <clears throat> although the minister indicated that we made uh, recommendations outside our mandate, it was never indicated what recommendations were we made that fall outside our uh, um, mandate. <clears throat> we just assume it has to do with the um, uh, solution that we put forward regarding the continuous pilot training and the retaining of scarce skills that we suggested must be based on a civil military relationship and to outsource the initial pilot training to a private air school such as 43 air school port alfred subsequent to the military training phase and then we recommended that pilots train on a cheaper platform, but obtain more flying hours. Thus, are more experienced before elevating to a more expensive platform. And then we also recommended on uh, training that the minister negotiate at government level for the procurement of more economical and sustainable aircraft, such as the Cessna 
at approximately 3 million, of which the services, the parts and the replacements can be procured and manufactured and replaced within South Africa. Um, and we also recommended that the finalized DOD supply chain government's framework will provide a policy framework for all policies related to defense supply chain management processes. Uh, we also said that the finalization of the national procurement bill for implementation of the DOD procurement policy will enable the uh, Air Force the procurement of commodities from local suppliers and direct uh, support from small, micro, medium enterprises in the areas uh, where the SANDF has a footprint. We also say that the civil military pilot training contracts to be negotiated, signed and implemented between the SANDF and private, private flying schools. On the long term, we also say this will enable the Air Force uh, Base Lange Bahnweg to preempt the shortages and requirements on the PC-7 Mark II Astra platform to stock sufficient levels of space and replacements. That is our, our assumption when she said we were make recommendations outside our mandate. Then there's one other issue that I want to highlight here. We also recommended that the DFSC, the Commission with Department of Defense, uh, Education, Training and Development functionaries, especially within the South African Military Health Services and the LOC Division, to approach the uh, Department of Environmental Affairs, the South African National Biodiversity Institute, and the Wildlife in Environmental Society of South Africa to negotiate the possibility of SANDF members to attend specific conservation and environmental management courses or to, com to compile specific DOD courses, curricula for accreditation. Uh, and that is our assumption that these were the recommendations that fall outside our mandate. Thank you, sirs. Thank, thanks, uh, Ms. Lutz, for that uh, comprehensive uh, response. Um, I don't know, uh, through your chair, whether any of my other commissioners would uh, want to, to, to add to what's already been said. Commissioners? It doesn't look like it. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, I think we've answered to all the, um, the members' uh, issues uh, that they've put forward uh, so far. Over to you, Chair. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Commissioner. Uh, and thank you for those responses. I have not uh, seen any follow-up or any hand on the platform that seeks to make a follow-up. Uh, I want to assume that uh, uh, your responses were sufficient. Okay. Uh, yes. Thank you, Chair. It's Mudise here. Oh, okay. You have not raised your hands, Honorable Mudise, but you may proceed. Thank you. Thank you so much, Chair, and I apologize for that. Uh, one of the commissioners, when they responded regarding the uh, uh, complainants, that they don't entertain complaints from individuals. I just want to check then, what if there's a common issue that comes from different individuals from different units, uh, but having a complaint uh, uh, regarding a similar issue, but they are not organized in a group? How are you able then to maneuver uh, and give attention to that uh, complaint? If you do realize that it's similar amongst members of the Defense Force, whom is coming from different areas and different units, it's a common complaint, but it, it, it doesn't come in a form of an organized a complaint in a group. How, how do you then deal with that? Thank you. Yeah, thanks, thanks. thanks very much for that. 
Uh, I don't know, Deputy okay. Chair, you want to have a stab of that or shall I yes, ask Chair, yes, please, please come in. Um, thank you very much. What we do is that if it is a common complaint or one that we have dealt with already, we would share what we've done. And if it is an issue that has been tabled and submitted as a recommendation previously, we also share that information. But what we also do, we would also let them know, we have a standard presentation at week, on which all the time when we go to visit units, we, we make it known to them that if they have an issue that they know cut across beyond an individual, they can put their heads together, make one submission and send it to us. So we, 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 we kind of facilitate so that the issue does get expressed so that it does find a way either to us or it gets submitted to the ombuds. Thank, thanks, Deputy Chair. Mr. Motsip, you want to add to that? Are you okay? No, I'm, I'm, I'm okay with the, with the explanation of the Deputy Chair, because that's what exactly what we do. Uh, the, uh, what, what I can add is that, uh, uh, and when we, 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 we do consider, uh, uh, you know, not, not considering, but when we do receive this uh, individual complaint, and then before we can even refer it to to military ombud, we 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 do uh, some 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 extra work where now we advise the members to say, even though we are we have referred your your complaint to military ombud, please take note that uh, there are certain certain prerequisites that you need to comply with. The first one being that has this uh, have have you addressed your complaint through the grievance procedure, uh, and if it is not, uh, we advise the member to say that uh, 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 if positively you respond to that effect, that make sure that you you, you your complaint has gone through the grievance procedure, uh, because if it is not, military ombud won't be able to attend to your grievance. Though we, 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 we captured it in the in the in the advice or the letter that we sent to the member, uh, we, we to, to the to, to, to the member, we do make uh, uh, certain that they know of those kind of uh, uh, compliance measures that they must they must they must they must go through before they can uh, 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 have their complaints addressed or entertained by the entity like military ombud. Thanks, Mr. Motsepe. Uh, back to you, uh, Chairperson. Yeah, thank, thank you, Commissioner, and your, your team of uh, Commissioner. Uh, yeah, I, I, I think uh, you have responded, but I see another hand of uh, Honorable Kutaba. No, thank you so much. Um, for letting me have a second bite. Um, <clears throat> we, commissioners, we, we, we had the meeting, we had the, uh, the Huda, uh, with the top management of the South African uh, Defense Force uh, over the last uh, weekend. Um, high on the agenda was the the, the force design uh, and the force design and the force structure. So those were the two main items on the agenda, but particularly the force uh, design. But we thought uh, we should preface that um, <clears throat> we asked for we asked for a, a presentation on the analysis of uh, you know uh, security and threat in the country so that. Uh, we understand the context within which they uh, present uh, to us the the, the first thousand uh, uh, um, personnel. So we can't go beyond that. And uh, so there's a standoff, as it were, between the defense force and and, and treasury. But <laughs> treasury treasury doesn't want to budge. 
And as a result, uh, they've just placed uh, a ceiling, uh, a budget ceiling on their COE, which then forces them to overspend. Uh, I think it's going to be the pattern going forward by over uh, 3 billion rand. I think that's the previous year was 2.6 billion rand on over expenditure against their COE. And this year is 3.1. And uh, uh, it's, so we be experiencing that problem going forward. But because they can't overspend against the, they can't, they can't overspend against the total fund, they then have to uh, source this 2.1, uh, this 2.6 in the previous year, or 3.1 in, in, in the last financial year from other programs. So they must then take money away from other programs to subsidize the, the cost of employees. And uh, so that's the problem we, we are faced with. It looks as though it's going to be with us for a very long time. I'm not too sure if uh, this matter has come before you. One item is the employee-initiated um, voluntary severance uh, package. The door has been shut. And uh, because uh, the top brass of the military says, in 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 fact, <clears throat> uh, this voluntary uh, initiated um, uh, what you call this <clears throat> employee initiated voluntary uh, package was starting to take a, a different turn and producing unintended results. In that. Uh, <clears throat> you know, they they started seeing people they need leaving the, the, the system, you know? And uh, so they said, no, 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 no. We, 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 basically, people are leaving at those that we want. So let's stop this. And the second one was uh, the, the, the government made available a tool whereby uh, people could withdraw from service uh, without um, uh, attracting uh, any penalty, without without uh, any penalty. And uh, again, the department didn't uh, go for that. It didn't opt for it. And uh, they said no one should uh, avail himself or herself uh, to, to, to that. So, so in other words, uh, the tool that would make people to leave the system, one without uh, you know uh, attracting uh, penalties, have actually been uh, stopped. Has that not raised concerns? Um, that's a question I'm posing. Uh, I know the department. I, I we were told what the department is trying to manage. It doesn't want people. It doesn't want the uh, uh, the people they need to leave. But has that has that not created a concern? Uh, within the military, has, has that if if yes, has that been voiced? Has that been expressed to you? If it was expressed to you, what are you doing about it? That's one. And then the second one, Chair, is a, a fit for 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 purpose, a military. The average age of the of of, of in the in the in the military, it's 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 getting uh, you know. Uh, it deteriorates, uh, you know, every year as every year uh, as, as we move. In actual sense, uh, you would need more younger soldiers to 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 come to fit into the system, so that uh, you guarantee uh, the future of, of of the military. And uh, now with more with 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 the age starting to deteriorate the average age starting to deteriorate as it were has that not is that not an an, an area of concern uh, uh, or has it not been raised as an as a as an issue of concern by the full soldiers themselves to say look i i think i'm i'm old now and uh, i'm no longer uh, deployable and but the state still deploys me, you know, and uh, you know has that not been expressed as as a concern as far as you as far as the the you, you, yourself are concerned, um, you know, by members themselves.
So, so that now we don't understand the issue of deployability and, um, uh, or, or not, sorry, the issue of non-deployability only from the, 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 the angle of the top brass, but we need to look at it also from the angle of the people who are the receiving end of the orders. And uh, I'm no longer fit for age, but I still get deployed. Has that not been raised as an issue of concern uh, with you? Chair, it's just a discussion. I'm, I'm, I know it's not doesn't emanate from any of these reports that they've put on the table, but I'm trying to get this because we are debating this with HR of, 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 the, of the military. And um, uh, as, as it were, <laughs> see, th thank you so much. Uh, Mr. Yeah, Hutter, thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you. Honorable thank you. Mokwat. Uh, thank you. Let me just have a last bite here. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Mokwat. Uh, uh, thank you very much for Defense Force Services Commission and Commissioners. Uh, that has been quite a, uh, an improvement from the past uh, report. Now, there are only two questions that I want to ask. The first one is, uh, there is a backlog of cases with the ombudsman. And, 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 and that has got, a, it, it impacted negatively on, on soldiers. And most of whereby, they also resort to come to you to put some of their problems across. Now, having heard what you have, said, what you have just said, the uh, Chair, is that the, the, the grievances procedure, it tends to fail them because now, even if they have to go to the ombuds, there, are, there is a backlog of cases and there's nothing that they could do about that. And the, 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 there are also uh, vacancies in your department, you know, HR. And uh, as uh, uh, the chair, the, uh, the, the chair, Mr. Gabba has said, is that um, the department is on many occasions cut the budget and there is no, I don't see any time soon that you are going to give me more money to fill in those vacancies. Now with this present situation that you are facing, then how do you see the future or how will this impact on your, uh, on your programs in relation to the budget cuts as alluded by Mr. Kava and, and, and the team? Uh, I would like to call that. Thank you very much, Mr. Mute. Th thank you. Over to you, uh, Commissioner. Uh, thank you, uh, Chair. Uh, now, I found uh, Honorable Naba's uh, comments very, very useful and illuminating. I'm sure all the commissioners would, would, would like to take a bite of the, the cherry because I think those are are very, I mean, pertinent questions, pertinent issues um, that, that that we are we are trying to deal with, but uh, we haven't as yet uh, drilled down into the detail of some of these things. Um, I know we've spoken a bit about them, about the employee-initiated severance package and uh, the unintended consequences as a result of that, the forced design. I mean, I think those are some of the things which, as a commission, we should be able to uh, to draw down and, and come back with some really concrete uh, um, recommendations. We could discuss it with yourselves uh, in developing that uh, prior to going to the, the minister, but I think those are very useful issues. But let me just uh, first, firstly deal with uh, the... Um, the, 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 the issues around the backlog of cases. Maybe I can ask uh, Mr. Motsepe to uh, just speak on, on, on that issue. Um, uh, and then the, uh, the, the vacancies in HR, right? We as a commission and commissioners can add, but what we want to do is the, we, we've got a, uh, memorandum of understanding with the Reserve Force Council. Uh, we can get uh, people, uh, researchers uh, from, uh, they would recommend people from the Reserve Force Council. We would have to pay them from, from our budget, which we can do. 
uh, for a limited period uh, to do specific work uh, with respect to research. We could also ask uh, defense reserves uh, via uh, General Anderson. Uh, there are people there that we can uh, also pull in. Um, uh, and lastly, we can uh, also see whether there are members who are employed full-time in the SANDF at present, if they have the requisite, requisite skills that we are looking for with respect to research, we can ask them to be detached. We have in the past had members who've been detached, which means that the Defence Force or whichever component they come from, it's paid for by themselves, by, by the SANDF and not by the Commission. Uh, it doesn't come out of the Commission's, commission's HR budget. Mm -hmm. So um, that, 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 that for me is uh, some of the, uh, the issues around there. But, but coming back uh, uh, fit for uh, the, the, the purpose, I mean, I guess we have to go back and look at uh, uh, some of the reports, some of the visits we've done over the past few years. This does come through. It does, Chair. It does come through. I think we would have to draw down and pick out uh, some of the issues. But certainly... Uh, uh, you, you get a sense of um, when you visit. By the way, we haven't visited any of the bases uh, during 2020. Let's hope uh, in the next few weeks uh, conditions will be uh, a little bit easier. We might be able to visit a couple of bases uh, before the end of the financial year. Um, but it's certainly things we need to apply our minds to. Um, can I first ask Mr. Motsepe just to talk about the backlog of cases in military and board. Maybe the deputy chair wants to also come in. The vacancies around HR, I've spoken about if he wants to elaborate. Deputy chair, you want to elaborate? And then I think uh, other commissioners would want to uh, have a bite at uh, some of the comments made by uh, Honorable Gaba. Uh, over to Mr. Motsepe first. Chair, may I come in? Chair, may I come yes, in before please, Mr. Please, Mr. Please, do, uh, please do. Thank you very much. I, 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 I want to comment on what, uh, what Member Taba said mm -hmm. and confirm that, yes, um, the Commission is aware of the challenges. The Commission is aware of the current impasse. We are also aware that until such time that something is done, neither one of the entities that serve the, 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 the DOD by way of ourselves, our work will also be impacted. And perhaps I should also remind us that the defense review is one of the outputs of the commission. Um, the very first interim commission was inundated with the production of the defense review. So as a commission, we take interest in making sure that even though recommendations that we make don't happen, what is it that we can do? And it is precisely because of those challenges that as a commission, even though we understand our mandate to be advisory, we also understand our mandate to be one that talks to ensuring that and facilitating that the defense force must get funding. We also have a responsibility to ensure effectiveness and efficiencies and so on and so forth, monitoring and evaluation and so on. So that current impasse that you have spoken about, we have also come to interact through our visits to the units with the ordinary soldiers that share with us that I know that I'm no longer deployable, but because I do not have any other skills, I am 
not attracted by any of the offers that have been made because those offers will make me and my family perish. So against that backdrop, as a commission, what we have been working on is that we have been, and in fact, against the backdrop of knowing that, and, and the minister having said to us that given the current situation, we must know that even the recommendations that we make are most unlikely going to be implemented because there is no money. We then as a commission resolved that at the beginning of next month, as we go to a strategy planning session, we are going to be rethinking and repositioning our work and trying to target our work towards different ways and means of being solution oriented towards looking at possible ways that can help deal with the current impasse. One of the things that we are doing, the chair has already spoken to, we have an MOU with the Reserve Force Council, but in our interaction with the minister, we also got to know that the Reserve Force led by uh, General Anderson has also been working on the repositioning and the rethinking of the entire reserve. We're looking to partner with them. We also are aware that they are working and have worked on a model that we're working on core adopting and working with them as we position ourselves towards exploring different ways of assisting the two key questions that you have mentioned, which relate to the fit for purpose military, as well as the key question of how do we enable the arresting of the decline? We know that at the moment, none of it will happen unless a way of different ways of enabling sustainable lives beyond leaving the force for the people that may be eligible. Unless there are solutions beyond that, we are unlikely going to get them released. As you have said yourself, um, uh, uh, Honorable Taba, that their responses have been such that none of them has taken them up. So I guess what we say in summary is that we are gearing ourselves to work with different partners and stakeholders, both internally and externally, to explore ways of moving towards the solution. And if you look at and underline the fact that our solutions should not in care costs, we, 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 we are alive to the reality that we need to look for solutions, albeit that those solutions should not in care in cost internally. So with our own budget, together with different stakeholders, we're hoping as we reposition and rethink, we'll be able to come up with hopefully out of the box thinking that will enable the release and the, you know, partnering with other government departments as well and exploring ways that can even hopefully ensure the mobility into sustainable livelihoods beyond just being in the force, thus enabling the release of, or maybe enabling the openings in the force to be able to hopefully start absorbing and retaining, rejuvenating, I'm now talking to the rejuvenation of the force by bringing in younger people in bigger numbers. And um, on the issue of uh, the backlog of cases, um, yes, we have an idea that there is a backlog of cases, but from where we sit as a commission, our mandate is advisory. 
And because it is advisory, whatever issues that get presented to us, even if they are group issues, because as a commission, we do not implement, the only thing we do with those issues is to table them as recommendations towards solutions for minister to the minister. What we also do, we obviously, because amongst us, there are different expertise, as you will know, we also analyze the issues and relate them to the conditions of employment and capture those as possible solutions that could deal with some of the sources that cause some of the issues that make their way through the uh, through to the ombud. I also need to say that, as we said earlier, that the issues or the processes need to be followed. It is because policy has it that unless the, ex the internal processes are exhausted and members find themselves against the wall, they are not able to take them directly to the ombud, if I'm correct. But where we sit, because we know those policies as well, it is also important for us to respect those policies and ensure that they exhaust, even if it's a group, we would establish what processes have been followed internally. Because what that does is that if we take on an issue that has not been heard internally at all, even as we recommend it, we know that the first question we will get from the minister will be, was the internal process exhausted? So in that sense, it's important in our processes that we also adhere to those processes so that what we take forward is what can be dealt with and elevated. With regards to the vacancies, I'm not sure if the member was referring to the vacancies within the DFSC, but if the, 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 the member was referring to the vacancies within the DFSC, I think that the chairperson has adequately responded to it because we have the opportunity to request at least we have had that commitment from the Reserve Force Council that they can be able to assist us where we are unable to get the resources. And in fact, the commission ever since its inception, the permanent inception that is, has always worked with um, Reserve Force members uh, as well as um, other members, uh, wh wh what are they called again, uh, colleagues? I think they will remind me. But I think attaches. Yeah? And, and some supernumerary. Some supernumeraries. So this is something, uh, honorary members, that we are looking to work with going forward. Uh, it is something, even if as a commission, we can we can we can um like appoint all our positions you will recall that our constant issue is the levels of the commission of the secretariat we do not have the commensurate levels that support us adequately the levels we have are very low so this is what makes us end up having to work more because we, we have to take responsibility. The highest level of the secretariat is the head of secretariat who is at the director level. And that level is not a commensurate level to provide us adequate support. So this is something we continue to table and we tabled it at our last meeting with the chief HR and we're looking to engage them together with the new sector to request resources to support our work. Thank you. But Mr. Musipe, you. you can come in if I've left anything out.
Uh, now, I, I joined late because I was cut out, uh, but I think it was sufficient. Thank you. Oh, okay. Thank, thank, thanks very much. In, any other commissioners want to come in? May I also uh, come in, Chair? Please do. Before, please come in. Before, before, if you can hold on. Uh, in the in the interest of time, I want you to to wrap up. But I saw a hand of uh, Honourable Mike. I want to take that last question so that when you respond, you respond uh, uh, and 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 wrap up. Uh, thank thank your... you, Chairperson. Thank you. Yeah, Honourable Mike. Thank you, Chairperson. Uh... I just wanted to say, uh, especially on what Honorable Kawa said, uh, seemingly nowadays there's a very thin line between the Joint Standing Committee on Defense and the Portfolio Committee on Defense. Uh, I think uh, uh, the service uh, uh, must be falling into the Joint Standing Committee on Defense, not that the Muslim report here and there. And if they are to advise the minister, then surely they must know the force design and they must specifically say, or you know, uh, if Treasury doesn't say this, then they advise that the force that is needed is this. We've got to get special forces. Special forces are people like this, those that if you recruit out of a hundred, you only get 10. They, I, I'm, I'm under the impression or they must uh, uh, advise and say, then if this happens, then it means we don't have a defense force. I thought that is what they are supposed to be doing. I, might, I was cut out from time to time. If they are to advise, then that is exactly what they must do on the personnel side of the defense force. And if, if, Theirs is simply to say we advised and nothing happened. I think we talked about this some time ago. Then it's as if they are not doing anything. They must understand the Air Force. They do understand. And when they advise, they must say, if Treasury says this, then it means we won't have anything. If they say we can't let these people go because even if they go, we'll go out and head hunt. I understood uh, uh, Honorable Kaba to, to be saying that. But if that is not, and if they don't get, uh, uh, their recommendations are not taken, what happens? Can they take it to the president and say to the president, or, okay, this were our recommendations, and if this is not happening, then we wouldn't be having a force. Mm -hmm. I understood it to be that, and that would fall under the Joint Standing Committee on Defense. Doesn't deal with nitty gritties, it doesn't deal with legislation, it doesn't deal with all of these things. It deals specifically with what they are supposed to do. I wouldn't like an answer to that, but I understood uh, Chairperson Kaba to be saying that. And if they don't do that, then I don't, I don't see them. I see them complaining like we are complaining, and they are a sort of an institution that must make the defense force tick. Thank you, Chairperson. Yeah, thank you, Honorable Mike. Uh, Honorable uh, Chair, do you want to to have a bite? 
in uh, in a, a a conclusive way when you respond i'm giving you uh two minutes to respond and conclude uh commissioner thank you thank, thank you chairperson uh you, you know i think the deputy chair commissioner Shapagoza, was trying to explain uh how we want to go about um going forward, looking at the way that the, uh, the SANDF can be rejuvenated, the force design, uh, what we think about it as a commission and make recommendations. I think she was trying to explain the process that we want to follow and assist uh, the Reserve Force Council in uh, developing some kind of recommendations. But we need to also drill down and do a lot more research on this issue. You're quite correct. Uh, we, uh, we need to think about it very deeply, then come up with some, in our view, some workable recommendations that we can put to the minister on this issue. Um, I think the others were, were, were basically comments uh, through your chair. But uh, from my side, from our side, uh, I think it's been a very useful interaction. Uh, there's some... Uh, questions uh, that were thrown up at us. Hopefully we've answered them adequately. Um, but uh, I, I, I think all in all, um, we've responded uh, uh, to most of the issues raised. And I think the issue that uh, Honorable Knaba is uh, raising, I think we need to unpack this uh, a bit more. Uh, I would welcome a further discussion between ourselves um, as a commission and the portfolio committee to talk about this uh, this further because it goes to the core, it goes to the heart of uh, how we can um, uh, rejuvenate uh, the defence force. Uh, on that note, uh, Chairperson, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, and thank you for 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 presenting and uh, taking time to elaborate and uh, expand on the responses that uh, you and your team have uh, given the joint stand to the Joint Standing Committee on Defense. Uh, yeah, I think that uh, concludes the item. Uh, you might be, uh, you are released if you wish to, to leave the meeting, you might do so. I'm now going to hand over uh, to the chair, uh, Honorable Tawa, to proceed with the meeting. Thank you very much. Thank you, much. <coughs> thank no, you, thank you very much. Thank, thank you so much, uh, Commissioners. Um, yeah. it, it was a pleasure having you to, tonight. And uh, we'll certainly have another engagement where we just have a discussion. Um, you know, just general discussion on some of the issues that came up during this meeting. Now, thank you so much. Have a great thank day. You thank you very thank much. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. We agree with you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Good night. Bye. Good night. Not at all. Not at all, sir. <laughs> I'm, I'm in red, not in blue. This door is in blue. <laughs> you know. <laughs> is there my fire and my panya? <laughs> I thought... Mafanya and Mapanya. Mapanya is a general, eh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, but I was actually saying no, but I knew him to be in red, and now why blue all of a sudden? <laughs> all right. Um, the program, please. Chair, See, while we're waiting, we appreciate, and we appreciate the desk from Ryan Chairperson who was here just just for a very short time, but he, he did a sterling job with that. Thank you. Uh, acting who, who, who's that? Uh, which, which one are you talking about, uh, Mr. Ryder? No, I'm saying uh, Mr. Mutle. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Thanks, as, thanks, as the thanks, dead Royan Chairperson, just for a short time. <laughs> yes, yes, you are right. You did a sterling job. Don't, Thank you so much. You don't, you don't usually... 
they don't usually give young people uh, 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 otherwise they are going to think they are doing it right you must always say they are doing wrong so that they do the right thing all the time <laughs> i agree with you i agree with you you are 100 correct good mr marquis yeah thanks colleagues yeah, yeah, yeah here is the program for 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 that you are put can you push it down uh, we are on day three of the program, and uh, the 28th, and then next week uh, on the 29th, uh, we have the NCACC uh, before us to present on their uh, quarter two report. And I'm told that they 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 would have their own meeting uh, in the morning uh, to prepare for our. Uh, their presentation in, in the afternoon. So uh, essentially, uh, they are ready uh, for us. And then on the on Thursday, the 5th, uh, is briefing by the defense. Oh, yes. Um, uh, we wanted to call in the industry again um, uh, to have a, a discussion with us. And um, because the situation in the industry is deteriorating with denial going down with the, uh, the DOD uh, not budgeting for the special defense account. And it looks as if the situation is gloomy out there. I, I don't know, colleagues, you may actually want us to take um, a visit to see what, uh, a, 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 what you call a, a site, a site tour. Yes. A, to talk uh, a side tour to to see what some of these uh, uh, people are doing out there, and uh, I, I don't know, but for now we just want to take a, a presentation. Excellent, excellent, on, on, excellent on. suggestion, Chair. Excellent suggestion. Is it okay? That's fine. We'll try to fit that one in, and um, you see, and uh, there is a point that uh, Tabo uh, has been raising on the transformation. Uh, of the industry, uh, so we want us to discuss that too on on this particular day. There's a charter that was produced. It looks as though it's uh, it exists in paper only. I don't know, but we would, we, I want to pack that for 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 for, for this day, uh, Thursday the fifth, and then uh, the Thursday the twelfth. Uh, you see, the, I can see a database there. And uh, I thought I should just, uh, uh, you know, we, the Joint Standing Committee, the, <clears throat> the more uh, the, I, the, the, you know, I'm, 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 I'm starting to understand the, the, what, what, what the role of the Standing Committee should be versus the portfolio committee. I think Mike raised that point uh, in their own. You see, we are a Joint Standing Committee on defense. There's no military veterans. But it is a portfolio committee. It is a portfolio committee on defense and military veterans. So the Johnston Committee was created by the interim constitution long before the establishment of the military veterans, uh, long before the act and uh, long before the Polo One resolution table, and, uh, and 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 yeah. <clears throat> so in other words, uh, the the military veterans don't. They, they, they shouldn't appear before the Joint Standing Committee. They must be on the other side. But of course, like uh, Mike said earlier on, and uh, because we look for s slots to prosecute uh, matters, we've not been with the lines, the line got played in, in, as, as it were. So, so in other words, on the 12th, we may have to remove this to the portfolio committee and have something for the 12th. At the moment, I don't know what it is. And then on the 19th, Chairperson, uh, yes, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't want to be uh, uh, out of order. Yes, sir. Well, it, it was done. Whatever is within the DMV, if it is about a the life of people who were in there, I think they still belong there. 
Sorry about so they said belong to us. Okay. You 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 hold the view that they still belong to us, eh? Correct. They still belong in there because oh. uh, they were soldiers and uh, we will deal with that at some other time, but for now, surely they still belong in there. Uh, colleagues, and okay, that's fine. No, no, no. I, I, I was raising it. I think I'm, I'm, I'm happy to hear that the, you, you are saying that. Um, of course, it, it, it doesn't matter to me now. The two have inter are intertwined, and I just call them defense portfolio, defense committees. Yeah. And um, I think they offer us more time to discuss issues than any other portfolio committee because we have one committee that deals with, uh, you know, matters, defense, and military veterans. And then the next item, colleagues, is a new one. I asked them to flag it, you know, to, to zinc cream. is a presentation by the South African Un Unintegrated Force uh, um, United Front. These colleagues are SA, former SADF who were, who were disbanded and uh, before integration. And they also included there are the Zulu. They say it was Zulu Natal uh, Defense SDUs, uh, not SDUs, SPUs, Special uh, uh, Protection Units. Self defense. Oh, self protection. No, self protection units. But I, there's nothing like there's nothing like case that ends self protection units. It, it was was Zulu. It's think I had self protection units at the time, and uh, because they, 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 there was SDUs and all that. Uh, so and and so they wrote to us. They wrote to 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 the speaker, and the speaker has referred the matter uh, to us. And uh, but I want us to to follow the same process. In relation to this, mother, your line is who's, who's talking, is mother. I wanted us to to say to them that we have received your 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 request to meet with the portfolio committee, but but we want to know who your members are and get the list ahead of time so that we are able to go through the list and see who these people are, whether they have a claim all of them or some of them, or they're using this United Front to recruit and, and, and get people to pay to become members with the promise that if they join, at some point, they'll become military veterans or they'll be integrated and so on and so forth. So with Khoisan, I think we're doing very well. The Khoisan uh, self protection Unit, we have asked them to produce us uh, a list. They have since produced a, a shorter list and we've asked the Department of uh, Defense to go through, come through this list, check who these people are, whether they were at any point uh, uh, members of the Defense Force, and uh, if yes, uh, uh, how they exited the system. They'll give us the comment against each one of them to say, no, this one was on contract, so his contract expired, and this one was um, discharged, uh, for the following reasons, one, two, three, so that we know exactly who these people were talking with. So that list of the Khoisan that they generated has since been submitted to the DOD, and they are currently um, commenting on each one of them. I want us to follow the same, uh, um, uh, what you call, uh, approach with the unintegrated forces, uh, United Front, they are SADF, but the they, they, they Africans. I think they're saying that the Africans. SADF, the Africans. And um, look, otherwise I would not be entertaining this, but because they were forwarded to us, we have no choice. They've written to us. We have no choice but to see them and, and then make a, a decision as to what, what, what we do with what they present before us. And then the last item is the joint oversight uh, visit. Um, but this is done together with the portfolio committee. So it's one, it's between the 26th and the 30th. Those are the places we selected to visit uh, on, on, on between uh, uh, in, in that week. Colleagues, I, I don't know, you want to comment? It shouldn't be long. Uh, this, this being the last item after it we close. Uh, may I invite your comments, uh, colleagues? Thanks. <coughs>
Oh, maybe the hands. Uh, I'm going to check the, the system. Uh, I'm checking the part. Oh, there's Mike. Mike, uh, uh, is your head up? Chairperson uh, here. Yes, and you are right. Sieve through them. Yeah. And think and and decide whether you need to put them here or not. Okay. Because we okay. might we might end up <laughs> and, and and then maybe organization before you put them in suggestion. Here tonight, eh, that I'm not speaking too much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I knew you were going to come at some point. <laughs> yeah. No, no, my my apologies for joining late. First of all, yeah. uh, but I yeah. but I I informed you in advance. Yeah. Then I want to I want to agree with Mr. Markey. Um, you know, we have to we just have to go back to the to the basics and the rules um, of who is uh, statutory forces, who is unstat non-statutory forces. Um, yeah. And I mean, you know, if we want to, you know, I mean, I feel I feel for many of these people, but but the moment that you are going to bend the rules to accommodate certain or you create expectations, yeah. uh, then it becomes a problem um, because then it will will come and haunt you. So I I agree that we have that you have to just look at the basics and the principles um, because if we want to deviate from those basics and those principles. We know that it is a change of legislation. It's not that it's just a change of, of attitude or approach. Uh, this was in terms of legislation that that was done. So, so that is a long process if you want to change legislation. And obviously, if you want to want to change legislation, then we must look at resources. Because, I mean, people want to become involved and want to be, be acknowledged. Uh, not just for the for the sake of of saying yes, we acknowledge you, but you know they're looking for benefits, and uh, we know what is the situation in terms of the budget. We know it's a situation in terms of the econom economics. Yes, I mean everybody that in terms of legislation and the basics qualifies. Yes, we must look at them. There's no doubt about that. Uh, but we but to create new categories of members. Uh, and to put that through legislation, um, I mean, it's it's going to be challenging. And uh, so I agree with him with that. With regard to the program, I think we have spoken about this program. So all of us are basically on board in terms of your suggestion on the program. Uh, and in terms of the visits to the defense industry, I think that is a, a fantastic uh, suggestion because that is where you get first hand uh, information and experience of problems and challenges of the industry. Um, for instance, now we know that there's a lot of industry uh, sectors that has been imp implicated, but we don't know exactly how it has been impacted on their employment, on their exportability, et cetera, uh, their intellectual properties, what happened to the intellectual properties? Have they lost some of that intellectual properties to, the, to, to other countries in the meantime? So, so there's a there's a as a comprehensive uh, in piece of information that we require. Here. An oversight study will be by far the best, and we know that there are prominent per players in South Africa that we need to acknowledge in this regard. And then, obviously, our our oversight visit by the end of, of November, I think that is crucial important. Um, we we are we are now getting into a stage where. The, the protection of the integrity of South Africa and borders and our land borders and sea borders, but specifically on this oversight is land borders, that is critically important. And 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 we can only go out and and and, and see and experience for ourselves. I can I can attest to the importance of the visit to the DRC that that had on me and on the portfolio committee and the joint standing committee at that stage on our under perception and perspective on that uh, challenges totally 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 so uh, so in principle we support that and i think that's a that's a good program thank you uh, colleagues no, thank, thank you so much um i think you are both right uh, i think um i think yeah, yeah, I take that this is as 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 um, advice. Yes, yeah, Mr. I would like us also to to attend to this issue of military veterans. 
whereby there are there is a clause somewhere that says when when you have uh, served the this, the military for for two years automatically you go out you already are qualified to be a military veteran so th that area we need to attend to that area so that the, there must be a stop to the continuation where all these other organizations just play up like uh, 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 that area where even people who have been trained for two years without even having gone into uh, a service already or because of the loss of the country qualifies to be military veterans. Okay, I, I would like us to attend to that one as well. Thank you. It, it diminishes the, the, the status of a military veteran. Uh, I think, yeah, I think uh, uh, Chairperson, can I just say, uh, last time on with, uh, sorry, sorry, I'm getting into, I'm, I'm, I'm being in military, the military police will be arresting me. When the general is talking and I'm putting my hand in there and talking. No, I'm saying that's exactly what we said or uh, the amendments yeah. of the DMV Act. It is exactly going to say that. Yeah. And and it is going to come before us. And then we would we would say something about that. I agree fully. Or you can just buy a uniform, a checkers, and then you wear it and you think you are a veteran. And I agree fully. But please. Let's withdraw, knowing that the next meeting uh, is with the NC, uh, NC uh, CCC uh, <clears throat> next week on the 29th. And the, but in the meantime, we'll be processing the program with the management. But I take note of everything you said today, and uh, and, and 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 lastly, that. Um, I think Mr. Mafanya is right uh, that it undertaken that not let me. No, no, no. no. This is, we sold so many bullets. That, but given the nature of the meeting being public, they are unable to do so. I will have to check uh, with the minister responsible, Minister Jackson in table, whether uh, it will be this report that is already in a uh, table in parliament that they will be taking us through or they would want to have a thorough going to, a, a, a discussion that uh, you know uh, goes beyond what they've or that what they've already put on the table I'll, I'll check that with him in which case I will then close the meeting I hope we'll find a way of closing it so that we can receive this uh, input from them the colleagues thank you very much we have come to the end of the meeting. Thank you very much for, for taking your time out. And uh, I also 